We have loudspeaker announcements, maybe find it, where TSA says, uh, don't make jokes or you'll be arrested. Next, it'll be permanently detained. Uh, they don't say don't make threats or you can be arrested. They say don't make jokes because they want you to be scared. I mean, the mayor of Austin, when you go in to speak for three minutes, he goes, now watch your mouth. I can have you arrested. Serious yeah, I, criminal charges. He wants you to know you're scum. I kind of hate talking about this, talking about his business and stuff like that, but I was just so appalled by it, uh, and I just wanted to get your analysis on it. Well, I mean, it's all make work, because FBI's main mission now is not fighting criminals, because criminals run the government. It's not white-collar crime. It's, it's political crime. It's making us the enemy and creating enough reports to go to Congress and say, you know, look at these terrorists. So that's all it is. I appreciate your call. It, it, it's, it's creating the perception there's all this terrorism, the perception there's this danger. Joey, you're on the air from New York. Thanks for calling in. Hey, how you doing today, Al? Good, I'm doing great. Go ahead. All right, man. So, all right, I'm 19, and um, my, like, my generation of people are, um, we're, like, knowledgeable with this whole NWO, the whole um, try and depopulate us, make us stupid, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, well, like, a bunch of my friends, we're all, we're all trying to rebuild the society. We're trying to think about 20 years down the future of how we're going to be basically in your rebuild what everyone's broken down. Um, I mean, any advice on how we can rebuild America, uh, anything at all, how our generation can focus on ourselves instead of all this other distractions we have going on day to day. Um, I'm, that's all. Well, I think you start with watching less television, exercising more, finding honorable people to be friends with, doing business with those that have proven that they're honorable, and just being a man, being a woman, if you're a woman out there, and uh, picking an issue that you're going to fight locally, becoming a leader in your area, calling yourself a citizen journalist, going out and doing commentary, just like I do with an iPhone, you know, even when I'm not working, uh, and, and, and just becoming active in the electronic soapbox, but also the physical soapbox. The journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Uh, go speak at city council. It'll be on local cable. Go speak at county commissioners. Go speak at the water district. Say, I want the fluoride out of the water. Uh, read, you know, AP Reuters headlines about brain cancer and bone cancer from it. And just bombard them with our messages. Take your own intel, put out your own message. Take our message, if you agree with it, amplify it. Uh, they can't oh, stop us. Completely. Well, that's it right there, brother. Being an honorable Thank you person. So much, Alex. Yeah. I'm just like I'm just trying to get my generation to get the proper knowledge to not like not necessarily rebuild America, but re restore it to what it should like how it used to be. You know. Well, like, you do that by cutting how... taxes and not letting the money go to the globalist. Right there, you cut taxes and less money goes to Washington, and you cut debt. It kills dependency. It promotes individualism. It's the beginning of the end of the globalist. Great job, Joey, for calling in. TJ in Maryland, you're on the air. Go ahead. It's DJ, DJ. Is DJ, name. welcome, Thanks DJ. Thanks for having me on the show, Alex. You bet. Thanks for having me on the show. You bet. I have someone in my family who is completely aware of the New World Order. They know that the banksters are absolutely robbing us. They know the food is poison. It's genetically modified. They know that the vaccines are poison. They have mercury in them. But she still tunes into MSNBC and watches Real Reverend Al Sharpton's race-baiting politics. I mean, everything is about race. It's absolutely sickening. It seems like Reverend Al Sharpton himself is keeping racism alive. How could I convince this person that Reverend Al Sharpton is simply a pawn in the New World Order scheme to help control and manipulate black people? Well, I would just point out that, you know, Al Sharpton doesn't talk about 50 plus percent of blacks never being born. I would show her uh, quotes from uh, Margaret Sanger about how they would take over the liberals to get control of blacks. I would show her LBJ quotes online about how the Democrats were going to try to become the Republicans and claim they wanted to help blacks because they wanted to control them. And I would explain to her uh, basic domestication uh, and how the system likes to get us dependent. And I would just explain to her that people like Al Sharpton, uh, bottom line, have a uh, goal of keeping people divided and conquered. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you, Alex. But I have one more question. Sure, go ahead. Uh, 
like a lot of my younger generation, like you said, the young African American. Tell you what, stay there, stay there. We're gonna come right back to you. Let you ask that second question. And we'll go to Chris, Jim, Kyle, Joe, and others. Earlier today, you were talking uh, with the director John Singleton, or you played an uh, interview clip of John Singleton. John Singleton, and he was talking about the gangster kill thug culture that's being pushed in the black community. And it really is. If you turn on BET, MTV, that's all you see is this gangster thug culture, and it's cool. That's what people like. And people are on Twitter and Facebook all day, this younger generation, and they have no thoughts of their own. But they, they, repeat, no it. You, they repeat it because they think it's cool. It's not really them Why that are... Why repeat it? Well, well, first do me a favor. Just, just talk right into your telephone. It's muffled. Why do you think that people just repeat what they see on TV? Why don't young people have an opinion of their own? Why can't they arrive at their own? Well, that's because they like, were set in front of a television... Children are supposed to repeat what their parents teach them, or, or, or elephants, the baby elephant learns from its mommy. Parents aren't parents. The television is. The average child watches eight hours of TV. They go to government training camps the rest of the time. So their mommy, their daddy is telling them how to survive, dress like a gangster, be rude to everyone, and all they end up doing is being in prison. But their mommy, the television, told them they would end up being winners. I mean, you know, every sitcom out there, the man's an idiot, the mother's the boss. Well, that doesn't create a happy family. The women think, I go divorce my husband, I get ahead, I get to be the boss. No, you just get even more work to do, and the state is now your man. Uh, so it's all been scientifically planned to destroy people. And so basically, any message you're seeing from mainstream television, you should be asking, what is it trying to sell me? And the answer is... He says your children belong to the state. I know. It's, it, it's over-the-top tyranny. I appreciate your call. That's because they think that we're that dumb. Folks, try to talk right into your telephone. There's, there's this phenomenon with telephones as well. Everybody talks like this, and you, I can't understand. You just put the receiver right up to your mouth. Uh, Chris in Austin, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. How's the, how's the reception? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. They were Hello? popping in my ear to say they had a video ready. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. How's I missed what you said. Start over. Go ahead. How's the reception? It's good. I can hear you. All right. I'm calling with uh, Texas Marijuana Liberty. We're uh, fighting tyranny on the front lines in Austin, fighting for uh, medicinal marijuana in Texas. Now, uh, I know you know... How much you know, pot have you smoked today? Uh, just a limited amount. Medicinally, though. Yeah. Of course. No, no. Yeah. My whole issue is I'm for decriminalization, but I've seen marijuana really turn a lot of people into jellyfish. I know it has incredible medical usages. I'm for decriminalization. Uh, I'd like to see it decriminalized. The problem is under a lot of state laws, they're just making you a ward of the state and you're waiving your rights to get medical marijuana. So it's worse than buying it illegally because the laws had already been reduced. You understand that? The globalists aren't going to push for decriminalization unless it's actually something worse. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, how do you become a ward um, of a state? Well, well, I mean, they make you sign forms in most states to become a medical marijuana user. And then you waive a lot of your rights. You put yourself in a database. Uh, you basically sign up saying you're a drug addict. And they can come in your house whenever they want when you do it. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not for that. But um, obviously there's a lot. No, of no. I'm for complete across the board decriminalization. Don't sell it to under 21 years of age. Make it like alcohol. Right, so this is the only way that we see it happening in Texas as far as a public awareness campaign, you know, similar to what you're doing, except with, you know, for medicinal marijuana to the use of YouTube until they try to shut us down, um, you know. So, and we're going to continue to fight through the, the Internet, and uh, we're doing a, a, a talk at Brave New Books April 25th at uh, 7 p.m., to inform more people, because you're aware they already have the um, tax stamp in Texas, correct? Yes, I mean, I, listen, I'm for decriminalization. I appreciate your call. My holy grail is not decriminalizing marijuana. My holy grail is pointing out that narcotics, heroin and cocaine and methamphetamine, to a lesser extent, are shipped into the country by C-130s and other aircraft and offloaded at military bases and private corporate reservations and then are laundered through the big banks to the tune of 500 billion a year that's mainstream news and that it's all a facade and a joke when the cops take somebody to jail for cocaine or something when the government's shipping it in
So I'm against the big banks getting the drugs, making them illegal at the end of alcohol prohibition so they can have a new business. Because then it lets them control organized crime, the money laundering, everything. That's why I'm for decriminalization. I'm not for using drugs. The same big banks are pushing all these drugs on kids in school. We're the on the march.